Hi, everyone. This is Sam Gabriel. Uh, excited to share with you today what I've been up to over the last couple of months. Uh, so basically, I've been learning quite a bit uh, about different uh, HashiCorp tools, specifically Terraform, Vault, Console, and Nomad. And to learn these tools, I actually developed an application that's a web blog. I call it the web blog app. And uh, in the process, I've been iterating over it over multiple phases to, uh, to utilize some of these tools and see how useful they are in the development uh, process. Uh, so I have a bunch of videos I'm going to share with you. And I have a blog post as well, a couple blog posts around that. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about how uh, to begin, you know, I needed to deploy infrastructure. So I've used Terraform and Vault to get things started. I used Terraform to provision uh, the infrastructure needed for the uh, application. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. And I have uh, a demo for you. So uh, why don't we get started? So the infrastructure uh, deployment workflow uh, looks like this in this diagram here. I'm using GitLab as my version control system. And I'm using Terraform, as I mentioned earlier, for provisioning the infrastructure. Uh, and what I'm trying to deploy is basically a GKE, a Google Kubernetes engine. So a GKE cluster in uh, GCP. And I'm going to use the uh, Terraform provider, Helm, Helm provider, to uh, deploy both Vault, both a Vault cluster and a console cluster. The console cluster will act as Vault's backend storage. So it will get deployed first, and then Vault will get deployed. Terraform will do all this for me upon a commit and a push from my uh, version control system. Um, in the mix, I've also introduced uh, what we call Sentinel is a policy as code engine that checks certain policies that you define. Uh, think of this as the guardrails when you're deploying infrastructure. So you can do things like say, hey, I'm not going to allow anybody to deploy uh, anything in production after 5 p.m. on a Friday, for example. Or you can limit the size of VMs that you want to deploy. So in terms of resources, uh, so machine types that can be deployed. Uh, this is one thing that I have in the policy that uh, I've applied here, and I'll show you in a, just a little bit in the demo. Uh, as well, I limited the number of nodes that you can apply <clears throat> in the uh, GKE cluster in a, in a node pool. So that's the first piece uh, in the infrastructure deployment. And that's, again, deploying Vault and deploying Console straight from Terraform. And what you need to do, actually, is connect your GitLab or your version control system with, uh, with Terraform so that upon a commit and a push, everything gets, uh, gets deployed automatically. Now, the second piece here is vault configuration workflow. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually using Terraform for uh, my vault configuration. Whenever I want to add something new to vault, I stage that through Terraform, and Terraform goes ahead and configures vault for me. And the benefit of that is that, of course, it's using the infrastructure as code uh, guidelines and principles in terms of having all the configuration uh, right there in code. And then I can come back and if I need to spin up a, a brand new cluster or maybe a, a staging cluster, I can do that very quickly. I have all the configuration of my production cluster ready to go. So once again, I have my uh, GitLab connected to, uh, to Terraform. Terraform deploys uh, any new policies that I might add to Vault, um, any new authentication backends or secrets engines that I might need. Uh, and that, again, is done in my uh, Google Cloud, in my GKE cluster. All right, so let's uh, take a look at the uh, repo that I have here. Now, in this repo, I've got mainly two folders, a Terraform Vault deployment folder and a Terraform Vault configuration folder. If I go into the Vault deployment folder, you can see I have the Terraform configuration to go ahead and uh, build my console cluster and also my uh, vault cluster. I'm using the Google provider, Kubernetes provider, Helm provider. I should also mention that uh, I got help from, from Jacob from Arctic on this. Uh, shout out to Jacob. Um, 
I'll send his his talk in the uh, notes below in the video. But again, thanks for that. Um, I did make some mod modifications to that to work for my my application. Um, so the other thing to mention here is the variables. Uh, file here. So I've declared all the variables that I need for this project. Um, you can see here are the declarations and the de defaults. Uh, but then you define the actual variables. You can do two things. You can define them. Sorry. You can define them. Let's go back here. We can define them in the Terraform Auto TFVARS file, generally speaking. Or better yet, you can define them in Terraform itself. So let's pivot over to the Terraform Cloud. Uh, screen and you can see I have two workspaces here infrastructure GCP Terraform vault configuration and Terraform vault deployment uh, these two workspaces are tied to that single repo in GitLab and if you go to the version control settings uh, notice that I've um, enabled only trigger runs when files and specified paths change and this ties to the Terraform Vault deployment folder inside uh, my GitLab repo. So whenever anything changes in that folder in the GitLab repo, that will trigger a, um, a run inside of Terraform. Uh, similarly, I've done the same for the other workspace. And that way you can tie two workspaces with one single repo. Now let's take a look at some of the variables that I have defined here. As you can see, the project name, this is needed for uh, GCP the cluster name for the GKE cluster to be built, the machine type. In this case, I've tied this to a policy that limits the sizes of VMs to be used for the GKE cluster to an F1 micro, G1 small, or an N1 standard one. Here I specify N1 standard two, because I'll show you in the demo how Sentinel policy will uh, will fail because I've, I've used a, um, a non-standard VM. You can also see the node pool name and the node pool count is also defined in the policy to be less than 10. So I'm gonna use 10 just to break it. And then finally your environment variables, you need this variable for Terraform to talk to the Google API and then confirm destroy if you want to destroy the, um, the, the infrastructure after you're done. All right, so what we can do is we can queue a plan manually from here or you can make a change in GitLab or your version control system, commit, push. It will, uh, it will trigger a run here as well. But let's manually just queue a plan here to take a look at how the policy checker is going to fail based on the policy that we've defined. So first thing is, uh, you know, as usual, Terraform will go ahead and stage a plan for you to show you what you're going to deploy. Now I've already deployed this and this is also, this is actually running right now. Um, you can see a force replacement from an N1 standard one machine type that I currently have to an N1 standard two. Um, you should also see the pool count um, going from two, I believe to, to 10 is what I defined here. Let's expand this just a second here. There you go. So the node count is going from two to 10. So that's fine. Uh, but here is where the policy check failed. So this is a, a soft mandatory check, meaning that I have the option of overriding it. Uh, but you see there are two policies, machine type policy and a node count policy. So if I expand this, see policy number one, uh, result is false because it failed. And the description is telling me that all GKE nodes have VM sizes in an allowed list. This is the allowed list that I mentioned earlier. So that failed. Uh, the second one also failed. And there's also a limit on the number of nodes to not exceed nine. As I showed earlier, we, we put 10. So that also failed. So you have the option of overriding this policy. Uh, so if I get maybe approval from someone, I can Put that in here. I can override the policy uh, and go ahead and deploy this infrastructure uh, anyway. You also have the option of doing a hard mandatory, which will fail this build right away, and and of course give you a notification. 
Now, everything here is auditable. So later on, you can come back and see who overrode uh, what policy and so on. I'm not gonna run this because I already have my infrastructure running, so I don't wanna change it. So I can discard this run and, uh, and that's done. Now, the uh, policy that I just specified, if you go under settings, which is the main setting for the organization, HashiCorp SAM, that's my organization here. You go to policy sets and here you can define any, any policy set. In this case, mine was the TFE policy GKE. That gets tied to a repository as well, tied to a provider. In this case, I'm using GitHub, not GitLab. And here's the repository that I'm using. And you can specify, of course, your Sentinel code in this repository, uh, but then you can say, hey, I want this policy or policies to be enforced on a select number of workspaces. And you specify the workspaces here. And in this case, this is a TF vault deployment that I just showed you. You can also enforce this across all your workspaces across your entire organization as well. So that's how you define a, a Sentinel policy or policy as code uh, in your environment. Now this does come with the paid version of Terraform Cloud or with Terraform Enterprise. And it's not part of the free um, offering from Terraform Cloud. All right, so let's go back and take a look at the final workspace here, which is for Vault configuration. And this is where I'm using Vault to, uh, using Terraform to configure Vault. Uh, and here's where I'm gonna define different variables. In this case, I've defined uh, database user, database password, database URL. Uh, we'll learn more about this in our next video when I talk about the application, the web blog app, and how we can define things in, in Vault that are used for, for MongoDB, for the app to connect to MongoDB. Uh, the environment variables that you're gonna need to interface with, with Vault is the Vault address. So where does Vault live? And this is my Vault instance here. And also you're gonna need a Vault token. So you could use the root token that you get out of Vault when you uh, initialize Vault. Uh, it's best practice to revoke that root token and create your own token specific to Terraform. Um, in my case, just for simplicity, I will reuse the root token and you can put it in here. And notice it says sensitive write only. Uh, so you can create a variable and in that variable, if you check the sensitive uh, checkbox here, that will make sure that any uh, data that you put in here is write only. Once you write it, nobody else can read it and it's encrypted and it actually uses vault to encrypt this under the hood. Um, so that's basically it for the demo. Uh, what we showed again is how we have uh, one repo in GitLab that ties into two workspaces in Terraform Cloud and how we've implemented uh, infrastructure as code to build uh, our environment that's gonna be used for the web blog app and also how we're using infrastructure as code to configure vault whenever we need to add, make changes to vault um, and everything is documented in one place. Our version control system is the single source of truth. Terraform is used for all the provisioning that we need. So hopefully this has been helpful and I'll see you in the next video where we're gonna get talk about the actual app itself and how we can use Vault to, uh, to secure some of the credentials that we use in the application. Once again, thanks for watching.